Every crime leaves a trace. Every object on this table has a story and in many cases, a crime scene. My name is Alex Thomas. I'm a researcher looking at using forensic tools to help investigate wildlife crimes. Everything that we have here is from ZSL's Biobank collection, our archive of lots of different wildlife specimens, some of them from the police, some of them unknown. This is an example of a hippo skull. Hippo ivory is a commodity. Tigers obviously highly trafficked for parts, for traditional medicines, um, but also for their skins. This unfortunately is the pore of a mustelid. You will sometimes get these used for kind of curiosities. These are the claws of some sort of big cat and these have been made into brooches. And then this is the skin of a pangolin. Hopefully most people know by now, one of the most trafficked species in the whole entire world. Today we are going to be using forensic light sources to identify different types of wildlife and see if they can be used in crime scene investigation. When you're in, in any environment, these lights allow you to see what your eyes can't. So whether it's bone, genetic material or something disguised, the light will make it glow. I can't believe how much fingerprint powder so, so is on all this. Any biological trace that you might omit as a human being will probably be on the chairs. Oh, my students are pretty clean though, good for them. Oh, not that one. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> This skull, this is very bright. The mustelid's poor, the bone bit of it. This here is a crushed traditional medicine ball. This is what it claims to have. Turtle, tiger. We don't know what's really inside, but the light might be able to tell us more than the label ever could. So it's, it is glowing. The inside of it is glowing. So obviously you get big, big shipments where they mix in wildlife products with other legal products. And you could, in theory, do this and say there's something organic in here. Quick sweep of something like yeah. that. You would have ping, ping, ping. Something's going on there exactly. that, that shouldn't be, basically. Wildlife crime is so much seen as crime that happens in the continent of Asia, of Africa. But actually, the West, they have a lot of the resources. So a lot of it comes to us as consumers or as transit countries. So we do have a responsibility to be properly investigating. Here in the UK, we see wildlife crime. We participate in it. We help facilitate it. So if you're ever purchasing something as a souvenir, we really want you to think about where has that come from? If you're posing with, say, a primate on the beach, where did that monkey come from? We just want it at the forefront of people's minds to always think about anything they do with the natural world. <laughs>